these stories of people making major transformations, finding success later in life, finding success in, in really tough situations really inspired me. And I felt like I knew people would want to hear those stories and I knew that it would motivate them. Hi, I'm Deirdre Breckenridge. I've spent my entire career helping women to get unstuck, to share their stories, nurture relationships, and to grow their brands. But most of all, to find their voices so they can make a difference. Women Worldwide features the stories of passionate women and the ups and downs of their journeys. With deep insight and advice, let Women Worldwide ignite your passion so you can excel in life. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Thanks for joining us wherever you are in this world. We appreciate you. And here's a Women Worldwide update for all of you. It is officially our fifth year anniversary. I can't even believe that what started out as this little podcasting experiment, uh, audio podcast turned video podcast, we are sometimes live at events, uh, and we're five years old. A big thank you to all of you. We would not be where we are today if it wasn't for all of you and your dedication and for showing up every single week. And also just a big shout out to my team. I could not do this without you, so thank you. Okay, let's get to today's topic and very special guest. The topic is, changing your career, changing your life. How do you know if you should take the leap? What does it take? What are the steps to get there? Who's done it well? <laughs> How do you know? Well, my guest today, perfect segue, is Sara Bliss, and she is the author of the book, Take the Leap, Change Your Career, Change Your Life. Sara has written 11 books including Take the Leap, um, another title, Hotel Chic at Home. She also co-authored three best-selling books with beauty and wellness guru, Bobby Brown. I'm just thrilled to have Sara on the show today. I could say a lot, but I think it's better that she shares her journey with you. Sara, it's great to have you on the show. Welcome. It's so great to be here. Thanks so much, Cedra. All right. Well, I had lined you up as someone who must be a role model <laughs> in what it's like to take the leap. And, and also, I believe the book, you interview over 60 people. So before yes. we dive in, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about your career moves and pivoting into author and writing Take the Leap. So I have always wanted to be a writer. But I got really sidetracked kind of early on in college. I just fell in love with art history and the whole art world and ended up there. And while I was there, all I was doing in my free time was writing. So I had to pivot into the magazine world and it was actually really difficult. Um, even at an assistant level, I ended up having to go to NYU at night and take classes. Um, and it was like my first lesson that HR people tend to be very limited in how they see you. They put you in a box, so you need to have certain keywords. So suddenly when I had that experience on my resume, then suddenly the doors opened and people wanted to talk to me. Um, the course had, had led me to do some self-publishing. And I went into magazines. I worked at House Beautiful on staff and went freelance way sooner than I should have. <laughs> and it was wonderful. For a long time, being a freelancer was actually – you know, a good, you know, career financially. It was not, you know, it wasn't like going into finance, but I could make a, a pretty good living doing it. And then 2008 hit and changed everything for me and how I saw my job and right. All these magazines were shutting down and my editors oh, were getting right. fired. And even though I had a couple of books under my belt, publishers were less willing to take risks on people without huge platforms. But the publishing model shifted, and what happened was they started really publishing more books by people who were famous or had large platforms or companies behind them, and those people often need, needed writers. So that's how I got into the whole ghostwriting world. 
Oh, and that's a whole world in and of itself. How did you like being a, a ghostwriter? So I loved it when I began writing for Bobby Brown because she's oh. amazing and we were really symbiotic and I'm really able to kind of channel her really easily. And it's just been a very positive experience for both of us. And she's been a huge supporter of my career. Um, and I'm really grateful to her, but being a ghostwriter is a mixed bag. If you don't, if you don't, aren't paired up with someone who, um, sees you as an asset, some people it, you know, writing can be very devalued and, people, I mean, I've had books where I, I joke, but it's funny. People are, their egos are so tied up in it. They don't want to let anyone know that they had a ghostwriter. So you have to sign all these contracts and then, you know, they have a big splashy book come out and you're not even invited to the book party. Oh they're, they're worried. <laughs> they're worried that people will know that they didn't write it. Oh my um, gosh. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's a funny world. It's a funny world. And I think there are pros and cons to it. I think now uh, ghostwriters are starting to realize that they have a lot of value and they're asking for more money. Um, I've had celebrities early on ask me to write books for like $15,000. And if anyone knows how much work goes into writing a book, it's just, that's just not yeah. like, feasible. <laughs> um, so it's nice now that the, I think the industry is kind of catching up and supporting ghostwriters more and people are also more willing to put, um, to credit their ghostwriters. No, I think that's really good that the industry is, is catching up. So how did you, um, how did you get to take the leap? You know, why, why this book? Why now? And what did you want readers to know? Well, the internet has changed everything. And I kind of watched my career shift. I mean, the magazine world is like basically hanging on by a thread and it's kind of shit made a shift over to digital, which is something that I had to do. And I, I worked at Yahoo for a little while after being in print and writing for print for many years. Um, but even more so, you know, writing got really devalued. And so that's how I ended up in as a brand consultant. In addition to ghostwriting, I consult for brands. And what's happened though on the editorial side, and that's really what I really do, I would say, even though my public face is as a writer and an editor, um, really my, my business is, is helping brands and doing everything from copywriting to marketing to PR to branded editorial for them. Um, but what that did for me is it allowed me to be pickier about the projects that I took and to sure. take more pr profiles, which is what I love, profiles and travel. And when I was writing profiles as early back as, you know, pre-2008, I saw that so many successful people had all of these other lives and careers before they found what clicked. And I just really, um, that really spoke to me, especially because I felt like my own career wasn't really going the way I wanted it to. And I found that these stories of people making major transformations, finding success later in life, finding success in, in really tough situations, really inspired me. And I felt like I knew people would want to hear those stories and I knew that it would motivate them. And there's a real gap for real stories in the media for real, I mean, for real people other than, you know, CEOs and founders and people who are already high profile. Right. And when people can be vulnerable and, and really share what's going on and how they kind of why they take the leap or what it is that they did. And I would just love to hear because, you know, interviewing 60 people must have been interesting, exciting, empowering. How did you find these people? And, you know, was it an easy part of the process? No, the research part was really hard. I mean, th there were a few <laughs> stories that I started with that kind of gave me the idea for the book. Like, Ashley Blaylock, who is a corporate tax attorney, and she ended up becoming the surf champion of Nicaragua, Ooh. the female surf champion of Nicaragua, and now That's she runs a women's surf school down there, and she's amazing. And I had some of those ideas, um, those stories lined up early, but then it was like a puzzle because I didn't want everyone, I wanted everyone to have different reasons for leaping, different hurdles they had to overcome different types of careers, different backgrounds, different parts of the country, because I really want everyone who picks up this book to find a story that speaks to them and speaks to where they are now and what challenges they have to overcome to make the leap they really want to make. 
So it was about a year of very intense research and putting the word out and doing very, very detailed random Google searches <laughs> and um, coming up with this amazing list. Oh, that, that is really cool. And what about you? Um, did you have any challenges? I, mean, I know you said the research was tough, but did you have any challenges as you were doing this or challenges with launching the book or even well, the book took, your business took now? Years. The book took me 10 years to, to publish. I, I first pitched it to a former agent of mine and um, I want to say 2007 and she basically was like, I had had two books that were out, but just, I mean, they weren't bestsellers. And she just said, you know, you basically haven't sold enough, enough books to sell another book on your own. And you need to go write for other people and kind of forget about this idea, write it for a magazine and oh, that's whatever. That's really hard to hear. That's it was really hard to hear. And it, I felt like it stuck with me for so long and I lost my confidence a little bit, even though I'm kind of an idea machine. I have so many ideas, I can't even really keep up with them. Um, it, it just, it wasn't being valued. And instead of, and then I talked to another agent right after and she was like, I think your idea is really, it's a really niche idea. And um, instead of going and talking to 10 more agents, which is 100% what I should have done, I was like, all right, well, okay, this door is closing, but then there's this other ghostwriting door and branding door that's opening up all these with magazines right. shutting down brands need to create their own content to reach their clients. So I saw all these opportunities to make money and still write and be creative. And I thought, all right, well, that this is, this is where I'm going and, and this is fine. And while I loved that work, I, it ended up giving me so much confidence and I realized how strong of a writer I am and how good I am at capturing other people's voices and telling other people's stories. And I just thought, you know what, I just have to get this book out back into the world. And so I rallied again and, you know, pitched five more agents and found an amazing for you. One, loved it and also thought it needed to get out in the world right away. And, um, that's, that's how I got back to it, but it was, it was a long road and it's an example of like, if you know, something's a good idea, just don't give up on it. Yeah, don't give up. And something inside of you must have been, it was your gut saying, I've got to do this. Something was missing. Even though you were loving the, the writing that you were doing or the branding work, it just wasn't reaching your full potential. <laughs> it wasn't. And I just feel like, I mean, now I, when, I, when I go and speak or I do book signings and have events, I have so many people coming up to me saying, I need this book. My sister needs this book. My friend needs this book. Or I read your book. I've read your work and it's inspired me to launch this on my own or go into this other business. And I'm so much happier and thank you. And that's exactly oh. why I got into this work because there are so many people who want to make a change, who have a great idea, who have a vision for themselves, but maybe the people around them are telling them it's a crazy idea. Maybe they're worried. Yeah. And they're Always worried about the financials of it and the reality of how they go from dream to reality. And so I, I wrote this book for them. I wrote this book for them. That's awesome. So what do you say to those people who have resistance around them? How can they just like get rid of all that chatter to do what they want to do? Take the leap. I think you have to have like an insane belief that you can do it. Like everyone in the book expected that there would be hurdles. They knew that it wasn't going to be easy. I think a lot of people get stuck right from the beginning because they assume like a dream job should be an easy job yeah. and um, they don't expect the amount of hurdles that it takes. And especially doing a mid-career pivot isn't easy. Um, so I just think having that tunnel vision for where you want to go and then figuring out what the steps are that you need to take to get there because everybody needs to take some sort of step to get them uh, to have that expertise in order to make a leap. Simple as just talking to people who have made the leap that you want to make, talking to people who are self-employed, talking to people who are in that industry. I think the best people to talk to are people who have already done it or have the expertise you want to have 
they're the ones who can really provide the roadmap for you and say, you know, hey, I know that, that this is an option for getting in or, hey, I did this and it really didn't work and don't go on down this path, but maybe you should try this. That's really, I think, a fantastic starting point. And Take the Leap serves that purposes because it's, you know, 60 people telling you their stories and their hurdles. But then I think the next step is really go find that real world person um, who can help you. But that's an easy first step. And, and that's what yes. I love about yes. Women Worldwide and, and guests like you who come on the show because you just gave such an easy, actionable tip. So for all of you listeners or if you're watching us on YouTube, the fact that you can, if you have this insane belief, <laughs> I think you called it. Yes. You can just go talk to insane. people. That's yeah. so simple. I mean, some, somewhere, some way, somehow, we are all connected to somebody who might be doing what you want to do. I mean, look at LinkedIn. You know, how yes. many connections? LinkedIn is the best starting point, honestly. If you don't know anybody, if no one in your world is kind of doing what you want to do, that makes it harder because I, I do think you have to see it to be it, which is a phrase mm -hmm. that a, one of the women in the book um, used. But I, I do think when you see people like you doing amazing things and um, let, you know, d pursuing careers that they absolutely love and doing well at it, then it makes it not seem like such a crazy idea. Then it makes it seem like a possibility. And it's more think, real. Yeah. Yeah. And what we were talking about before we started rolling is, you know, women are very supportive of other women. And I feel like every time I meet another woman who is in, you know, in the entrepreneurial space, running her own business, hustling, trying to figure it out, even if we're in totally different industries, I mean, it, the, it's always like, how can I help you? How can, you know, how can we help each other? And, you know, my best friend is in the art world. My, you know, one of my best friends in New York and she's, she and I are constantly helping each other out and pushing each other along and saying like, Hey, this social media thing works or, Hey, you should try this. And, and, and that's huge. That's huge. huge. Women are very supportive of each other. I found. They sure. I'm so grateful to all of the women that, you know, the women who come on the show and just the women around me in general are so giving of yes. their time and yes. their insights. Sara, I'm going to ask you to hold your thoughts just for okay. a moment. We're going to shift our focus over to the sponsor of today's episode, which is Rutledge Publishing. And Rutledge is um, one of the world's largest academic publisher of textbooks and journals. And they also happen to be the publisher of my book, <laughs> Answers yeah. for Modern Communicators, A Guide to Effective Business Communication. And in this book, I've answered over 150 questions on building relationships, social media, reputation, mentoring, measuring your communications. And Sarah, I thought it would be really fun if you answered one of the questions in the book. So, I'm up for it. All right. Well, your question, and I love asking this of, of people who are writers, especially, is question number 48. How do you handle rejection? You don't take it personally. That's really the place to start. I used to take it personally, especially as an early freelancer where you eat rejection for breakfast. I mean, it's every day. <laughs> and lunch and dinner. Exactly. I, you don't take it personally, but you think about why you might not have that, why it didn't work, and then try and, and make yourself like that much, you know, more qualified or um, more, more prepared for what it is that you're trying to do. I mean, you take the rejection and you try and learn from it, but you don't take it personally and let it make you, you know, feel like it's the end of the world or shake your confidence, which is, which is what I did. Right. Um, now I'm, I have the opposite approach to everything. I mean, I find I go into meetings and the phrase, I can do that with my eyes closed comes out all the time. I mean, it's, but I, but I, and when I first started saying that, when I first started being like, yes, I can do that for you, especially in my early brand work when a lot of it was stuff that I hadn't done before, but I just knew that I could. And then I was like, all right, well, I just need to deliver now. And I made it happen. But that confidence in yourself and just projecting that outward is, is very helpful. But re rejection ultimately should be fuel for you. 
Oh, that's excellent. Fuel for you. I like that. Thank you. Sarah, thank you so much for answering the question. And thank you to Rutledge for publishing my book and for being the sponsor of today's episode. Okay, let's dive back into our discussion. Um, you had just mentioned something about mid-career pivot. Yes. And I was curious, do you, did you find that a lot of the people who you interviewed in your book were more the mid-career pivots or are younger professionals really the ones who want to take the leap? Well, that's such an interesting question. So first of all, the recent polls have shown that millennials are very comfortable with changing jobs. Yes. Um, there was a recent Gallup poll, I think, that said that millennials expect to be changing their job within the next two years. They are not wedded to the companies they work for, and they're not necessarily even wedded to one career path. I think that they see that there's lots of options in the world. They really value experience. So in a way, that comfort, and, and they're working with the fact that the work world is changing so quickly. So their openness to changing and adapting, I think is in response to the fact that the whole career landscape has, is shifting and has shifted so rapidly in the past 20 years, thanks to the internet and thanks to the ability to start a business in your living room now, essentially, um, that they, they're willing to go for it. And I think it's very inspiring and should be more inspiring to those of us who are 40 and older, mm. who might find ourselves in a position where we have to take a leap, even if we don't want to. I mean, that's the thing with this book is, yes, it's lots of people who had dreams and, and, and shifted to very cool careers, but it's also a lot of people who got fired or divorced right. or encountered an illness or were having terrible struggles in their, in their previous job that made them have to leap even if they didn't want to. Um, and I think for the, those of us who are older who grew up with parents who stayed in kind of one career for life, this concept of pivoting, especially when we have a lot on the line, kids and families and mortgages, I think it becomes a harder thing to do to leap. It becomes more overwhelming. But I do think we need to take a cue from younger workers right. um, and realize that pivoting is, is necessary sometimes and can lead you to, lead you to a much um, better place. I think yeah, we're it's all- the soul. It I mean, is, it is. About it. it is. To stay in a, in a job, in a position, in a role that- doesn't sit right with you, that you're uncomfortable, that you actually dread every right, single day, right. you know, that, that is not good at all for your health, for your well-being. And I mean, I'm, I'm a different generation. I'm, I'm Gen X, custom mm -hmm, boomer. And it was almost um, when I was going out into the work world, you really had to stick with it, stick to it. Don't jump around. Show oh, totally. Right, that you have stability, and it's just a different ball game out there. But I like that you said it's almost inspiring to um, you know older folks in the professional world who you know want to be able to take the leap and and do something different. It can be done, and we're we're just in an entirely di entirely different landscape that we can do that today. Yes, there's Firing. potential now that there just there wasn't before. I mean, you can, you know, you can build your own website, you can set up your own social media, you can brand yourself um, in a way that presents you as an expert. And there's a lot of amazing opportunity in that yes. to have that that ability to to say, all right, well, this is what I'm doing now. Um, and I also. It, this book has given me so much inspiration for myself um, to not just stick to, to one thing. As much as I love editorial, I'm finding I want to put the focus on what my next book will be, but I'm also really building up my branding business, and I've added a lot of new clients, and I'm more comfortable now saying, hey, this is, this is what I do. This is not just my side hustle. And I wouldn't have done that, I think, a few years ago because I was so wedded to this kind of one, one track. So let me ask you something. Are you, now that you have your, your branding business and you're feeling really good about it, 
do you stay in a certain lane? I think you mentioned travel or something before. Or are you no, I. <laughs> that's actually the wonderful thing. My career has just been all over the place in terms of what I cover. So mm -hmm. I've been a beauty writer. I've been a travel writer. I've done business and profiles. I've, I was a celebrity journalist for a while. I've really been in so many different lanes. That's so cool. Yeah, I've, I've somehow managed to kind of pitch myself in a way that, that people let me, you know, take on all these different roles and, and I love it. Um, but the great thing about it is now I have expertise in a lot of different industries. So that means I can take on a lot of different clients. That's right. Now so, you can brand. Exactly. All those different, right? Industries, clients. Exactly. You've had the experience. That's great. Exactly. So I have, um, I have an amazing um, new hotel company that I consult for. Nice. I consult for um, a ski apparel brand. I'm wow. um, for Are a you new, a skier? I am. Oh, I see, am. that makes it even more fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I'm a new home line and um, I help with um, Bobby Brown with her new business. She has. Fantastic. What yeah. is she up to these days? Well, she has an, an branded editorial site called Just Bobby that I contribute to. Yeah. And she also has a company called Evolution 18 where she's doing beauty ingestibles, which makes so much sense for her because yeah. together we wrote a book called Beauty from the Inside Out. And it's oh, all yeah. About. I think yeah. I saw that. Yep. Yeah. And that's basically become the platform for her new business. That's and she has lots of kind of launches to come and she's in the book. Exciting. And she's, yeah. And she's reinventing herself in her sixties after leaving oh. her brand after 25 years, which is so inspiring and amazing. And she's like, just ready to go. And I'm actually doing a big project for um, a travel um, company and the founders in his seventies and he's had his biggest success in this decade. Oh, I love that. And that's so exciting. That's so I mean, exciting. It makes you, um, I don't know, the, the way I'm feeling about career and, and all the things that we get to do, I don't even want to retire. Like people, it, back in the day, it was always get to a certain age and then you could look forward to retirement. I get so excited about my communications consulting and all the training that I'm doing and the courses that I build and women worldwide, who wants to stop? <laughs> I know, I know. Well, there's so much opportunity out there. Yes. And especially when you're connecting with, with people directly, what you're doing, you've found your audience. And so you understand what they need kind of better than anyone. It's not like the whole, way, the whole corporate model, which is, you know, based on, you know, surveys and, I don't know. Sometimes they're a little bit distanced, I think, from their clients because there's just so many people in between. And um, sometimes from their employees too. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Well, that's going to throw that out there. <laughs> yes. Well, that's why so many people in my book are leaving corporate life. I mean, that's yeah. really what's happening is people are very dissatisfied. So interesting. And that's when you're dissatisfied, that's something, you know, comes awake. <laughs> exactly. It says it's time to take the leap and they should get your book, right? Yes. Yes. And actually here, I'm going to, I'm going to show, yeah, show a, it. a new a fabulous oh, um, paperback version, which I love and it's still color and everything. Awesome. And it's gorgeous. And I'm just so happy about it. So the cover, uh, is that like a green, like the green on my walls? <laughs> yes. Yes. We switched from yellow to green. Very creative. The paperback and there's new material. There's a new intro, which I think really, really speaks to not only why I wanted to write this book, I can open up a little bit more about that, um, but also really what people will get out of it and That's how great. they can use the book to help them. Awesome. Sarah, I can't believe that we're getting to down to the wire with the advice question. So it is time for you to share your advice with everybody out there who's listening or watching on what they can do to take the leap or, you know, anything you want to tell them about how great that pivot can be. So I do think the first step is, is what we already discussed that, you know, that connecting with someone, but I think you really, one of the best pieces of advice I've been giving people, especially when they want to start their own business and they're so worried about just you know, quitting their job and jumping into it. And I don't necessarily recommend that, but I do recommend taking that in between step. So whether that's starting a business as a side hustle, 
and doing it on the side and it means you're working way more hours but it gives you um, some room while you you know have hopefully some you know health insurance and a steady paycheck it gives you some room to see if your idea is viable and the, and or even if you can you know work for free on the weekends or at night which is something that some people in, in the book did they found a mentor and they said like I just want to learn everything I can can you you know let me follow you around for a few hours and you know start from the beginning there was a woman who was a lawyer who started out sweeping floors at a florist just to oh. learn the business oh my goodness yeah so i think um i think to me that's that's really a different a, a way to kind of get into it um without too much risk um and really get a sense of of whether it's the right thing to do and then Ultimately, you do have to be comfortable with the idea of risk and, and just going <laughs> yes. for it. And at some point, just saying like, all right, I'm going to see if this works. And, and if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. I can do something else. Um, but put your whole heart into it and, and go for it. And, and those are the people that really are finding a lot of success. Oh, that's great. Excellent advice. It's kind of like, you know, you got to step out of your comfort zone. You can minimize some of the risk, but it definitely is rising up and feeling empowered. Yes. Know what you love. So, yes. Thank you so much for sharing your advice. Last question, super easy. Sara, where can people find out more about you and your book? So I have my own website. It's called sarabliss.com. Pretty easy. No H, S-A-R-A-B-L-I-S-S. And I have links to buy Take the Leap. I have a little bit about the Take the Leap story in there. Uh, links to my articles, other books that I've written. And it's a, it's a great, and my social media, which is um, Sarah Bliss NYC on Twitter and Insta. That is easy. Thank you so much. I hope everybody checks out your book and connects with you on social media and goes to your website as well to check yes. out your work. Thank you so much for coming on the show, for sharing your journey, getting us all excited about the pivot. Yes. <laughs> you should you can that. take the leap. Anyone, anyone out there can take the leap. And, and Sarah has written the book and there are 60 people, more than 60 people who are sharing their stories. So thank you. And I also want to thank all of you for tuning in to Women Worldwide. Happy anniversary. Yes, happy anniversary. Thank Congratulations. You. That's a huge thing. There's a thank lot of podcasts you. and getting to five years and having the audience you have is, is really amazing. Thank you. I feel like Congrats. it's a big milestone. Yes. So please, thanks. Keep, it, keep the feedback coming. All of the feedback is helping us to grow. And you can tweet to us. Leave us a comment on Facebook. Sign up for the YouTube channel, Dear to Breckenridge channel. You will get a show every single week and some of my videos <laughs> on my work in between. Um, and please go to the Women Worldwide show website. Um, you can sign up for updates there. And we love hearing from you. So thank you. And until our next episode, stay focused, energized, and feeling empowered.